Welcome back to the shop today, guys. Today we got our hypertherm plasma on the bench. Let's open her up. Now this plasma, I uh, actually got from a buddy, uh, the place where he works was uh, getting rid of it, got it for a good deal. Uh, we fixed it, uh, it had a problem with the lead, and I'll put a video up here of us uh, fixing this guy. It was a pretty simple fix actually, so hey, got a cheap plasma cutter. But as you can see, there is no fancy C and C port anywhere on these guys. I mean this is an old unit, cheap unit, and actually a little smaller than what I'd like to run. But, a good deal is a good deal. You're not going to pass up a good deal. So, my plan is I'm going to hack into this guy and uh, make my own CNC port, basically. I think, kind of, maybe. I don't know. Fake it till you make it. So, I'm going to open this guy up, and then we'll see, uh, see what he looks like on the inside and see what we got to do. Hey. So this is what the inside looks like, boys. Doesn't look complicated, right? I'm sure it'll work. I don't know if I can show you the other side here. The other side's not very, uh, not a lot happening, let's say. That side looks less intimidating than all this. This is probably a don't do it yourself or don't do this at home moment. Because uh, there's, I'm assuming there's capacitors and all that kind of jazz in here that can shoot the lightning right through you. But, so I have two objectives here. Trigger and voltage. Now, I need to find a way to trigger it. That's my most important part right now. And to trigger it, all I need to do is find out which one of these lines, because these all travel in our main line that goes to our electric scissor. And so I need to find which one of those go to the clicky clicky. I find those two wires in here. I tee into them. And my goal is if I can tee into those two, uh, tee into them in such a way that when I unplug it from the machine, I can still use this torch. I can still use this as a plasma cutter. So why not, right? Makes sense to me, small hobbyist like myself. That'd work pretty good. And secondly, I need to find a way to measure voltage because, like I said, I do plan on having torch height on this setup. Torch height control, I should say. And if I have torch height control, it needs to measure the voltage. Voltage? Amps? Amps, maybe? I don't know. It's got to measure something with the, uh, with the lightning to uh, operate that thing up and down. It measures the arc between the plasma torch and the material. And... Uh, it sees if it needs more or less and brings it closer or further away. That's the Sunday school version anyways. But anywho, so I need to hunt down those wires. Uh, this thing was nice enough to have a schematic on the inside of it here. Y'all can screenshot that if you're working on a plasma similar. But uh, I'm going to teach myself how to read that because that's all Old Testament to me. That, or I might just take the torch apart and find out which two wires are at that switch. There's that too. But, anywho, I'm going to find those uh, those wires that I need. And at the very least, I'm going to find the trigger wires, because that's the ones we need right now. So I'm going to dig into this, and I'll see what I can find. I'm starting to figure this whole stuff out, boys. I'm excited. Anyways, I, uh, I found out... These two purple ones. And I found that just using my uh, really cheap digital multimeter. Probing these two wires, I probed them at the plug here at the top. And then by pushing the switch, I was able to decipher that that was the, the wires I need to do for my trigger. Because when I hit that button, my multimeter beeped and showed continuity. So I think that's how it works. I don't know. Somebody else should really be doing this. But I'm gonna tap into these two for our switch. Then I gotta figure out a place to mount a plug. Oh yeah, I need plugs. I need to order plugs too. Of course I do. Yeah. We'll keep going here, boys. 
Okay, so it's actually been a few days and I haven't gotten any further than when I left. But my wife and kids are all acting crazy today, so I kind of snuck out to the shop. But I figured out something else. Um, these white wires, this bundle of four here, and they go to that terminal right there. And then this black terminal right there, that's for the ground lead. Those two I need to grab for the Tortite controller. Uh, the white wires here will be for the negative side of the torch height and the ground or earth cable will go to the positive side. Don't ask me why. I don't understand it either. That's just how it works. I did find a really good video explaining this um, and I'll see if I can remember to link it in the description below. But that uh, was a very informal, uh, informative video. Helped me out a lot. Uh, and from what I've seen, uh, not a lot of things have changed much from the way these things are wired up. Mind you, there are some things that aren't in the newer stuff, but the way it operates is the same as the new ones by the looks of it. I don't pretend to be smart, boys. I'm just figuring this out as I go. I ain't gonna lie to you about how smart I am with plasma cutters. But, anywho, so now I'm actually gonna wire this up and I'm gonna put a plug on it, close her up, and we'll get her on the table. And then I gotta figure out my relay situation. So stay tuned for that. Well, guys, got her buttoned up, so I got her all sealed up. That should show you how much confidence I have in this. But what I did was uh, there's a little cubby here where you can keep some spare consumables. So all I did was fire my little plug right there. Two are the trigger. Bottom two are the uh, voltage. And so that will go from there to our control box for the trigger relay and for our torch head control once we get that. That'll be a while before we do that, but I might as well get the wiring done so I don't have to pull this thing apart twice. But yeah, so I'm gonna clean this thing up and then we'll get this thing put on the put on the machine and see if she fires. But I guess I gotta do the relay first. I'll see if I get to that in this video. Maybe I will, who knows? Stay tuned for more, boys. All right, guys, a lot has happened since uh, I was last doing a video, but uh, what happened was I got my relay mounted in my box uh, to operate with the outputs on the board, which does work. Had a little problem with the grounds on that uh, relay. Uh, for some reason, it would only work if I had the ground of the relay tethered to the box itself. But then even then, when I turn on Mach 3, my relay automatically starts when I turn the program on. So I always have to turn the plasma cutter on last. Otherwise, turn the program on the torch fires up so don't want that happening but that does work I got everything kind of jimmy rigged here uh, wiring will get cleaned up one day that's probably a lie because it's working now and I don't feel like screwing around with it I ran my torch lead I had acres of torch lead to run through my cable track so that's pretty cool but so far everything's working pretty slick. So I'm gonna see if I can show this to you here. Uh, so I'm just gonna go to torch on. Let's see what happens. Not bad, huh guys? This is me excited, just so you know. And the post flow is gonna go for a while. But uh, I'm, I'm jacked guys. We're gonna be cutting steel soon. Technically, we could do it now. Maybe I'll save that for another video. Because I still have a lot of dialing and I got to do, I, gotta, I want to square it up a little bit more. Dial in speeds. I don't think I have my Z axis, you know, dialed. So 
how I, yeah, I'll mess around with that off camera. You guys don't need to see that. That's just making sure that when I ask it to move an inch, it moves an inch. And I've kind of done that with the X and Y so far. And again, I don't have it like pristine, but I have it close enough for right now. But I do want to be able to cut accurate parts, as accurate as I can make them on a homemade machine. But anyways, thank you so much for stopping by, guys. If, uh, if you liked what you saw, please like and subscribe. I'd really appreciate that. Leave me a comment. Love to chat with you guys. And if there's a guy out there who's wired up a few homemade CNC machines and can explain that relay situation, uh, I would like to know about that because I don't think how I have it set up is necessarily appropriate. Uh, however, everything does function. Or if that's normal, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just wanted to build a CNC, so I'm doing it. Anyways, thanks for stopping by, guys, and we'll see you on the next one. See you.